Here is your beginner's guide to Airbnb subleasing, which is also known as Airbnb arbitrage. In this video, you're going to know exactly how this strategy works. And by the end of the video, you will be able to determine whether or not this is a good option for you to either start or grow your Airbnb business. Let's jump right into it. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Jorge Contreras. I've been a real estate investor since 2012, and I got into the short term rental business in 2017. And today I have 18 short term rentals that I own sublease and manage. My company does over six figures a month. And I also have an Airbnb Academy where I teach you how to acquire, launch and automate Airbnbs with or without owning property. Check out all the links down below. So Airbnb subleasing, what exactly is it? I want you to think of a bank. When you walk into a bank, let's say you deposit a thousand dollars into your savings account. The bank is going to pay you close to nothing. As soon as you walk out, I walk in, I borrow those $1,000 from the bank, which is technically the money that you just deposited. And if it's a business loan, they might charge me five, 10 or 15% on your money. So they pay you call it 0.10%, right? 10% of 1%. And then they charge me 10% on your money. The bank is in the arbitrage business. They are making nine point nine zero. Now these are just some general numbers, but this is exactly how it works. This is why they incentivize you to save money or even put it in a CD account where they might pay you three, four or 5% because then they loan out your money 10 times over again by something called a fractional reserve lending, which I'm not going to break down here. But my point is, is that the bank pays you the depositor a certain percentage. They charge a much higher percentage to the borrower and that arbitrage is their profit. This is exactly what you are doing with real estate. You, my friend, are becoming the bank. So let's say that you went and rented a property for $3,000 a month. You signed a 12 month lease and every single month on the first of the month, you deposit $3,000 into the bank account of the landlord. Now, let's say you got a great property in a great location with great amenities and you understood the pricing strategy. And let's say you were making call it $6,000 a month. How? Well, maybe you're charging $300 a night. And with a 66% occupancy, which is 20 days booked out of the month, you bring in $6,000 of gross revenue. You pay your rent of three grand utilities, landscaping. Let's say after all expenses, you're left with two thousand dollars in profit. That exactly is what we call Airbnb arbitrage or Airbnb subleasing. The difference from what you pay the landlord and what you generate on Airbnb minus some expenses is your profit. Now, who is this strategy good for? And why would anybody even want to rent a property when you can just buy a property? And I agree. My philosophy for all of you watching this video right now, and my goal for you is to own as much real estate as possible. They're not making any more land. The land is scarce. Real estate is scarce and it goes up over time. Regardless of the up and downs, you look at real estate in the last 100 years, you can pretty much draw a straight diagonal up from left to right. So my goal for you is to own as much real estate as possible. That being said, I understand that not everybody is in a position to go and buy real estate right now, especially in this high interest rate and high inflation environment. And I'm a big believer in do what you can with what you have where you are. So if you haven't already liked this video, make sure you hit that like button because then we can get this video in front of more people. Thank you guys so much. Do what you can with what you have where you are. If you can buy a property, amazing. Go and buy a property. Start building that long term wealth. However, if you are like most of my students who want to buy real estate, but they're not yet in a position to buy real estate, the next best thing is to rent a property and re rent it on Airbnb. Of course, you want to get permission in writing from the property owner. You have to keep in mind that in all lease agreements, it specifically states no subleasing allowed. That is because when you are renting a property for you to live in it, that's the intention for you to live in it. So you're not allowed to say you're going to live there and then not live there. If you do that, you can get evicted the next day. However, if you get permission in writing, right? Jorge Contreras has permission to use this property as a short term rental and you have that verbiage in the lease agreement. 
Now you have a sustainable and scalable business model. The landlord is aware. Now you're ready to start bringing in that cash flow, baby. Let's go over some legal considerations when it comes to subscribing to this YouTube channel, right? Guys, you want to make sure you're subscribed. This way you don't miss any future videos. So guys, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Now let's go over some legal matters, legal things that you want to be in the know about. The most important thing is to obtain a permit in the city that you wish to operate a short-term rental because no matter how great the numbers look and even if a landlord gives you permission in writing if you don't have a permit you're not going to be able to operate that property maybe at all or it's going to be short-lived why put all that time energy and money into something that's going to be short-lived so number one is make sure you can obtain a permit from the city that's number one number two you want to make sure the numbers are great we use a software called air dna in order to look at the comparables and projections of what our property can generate on a yearly basis. And then number three, getting permission in writing from the property owner. I want to give you one bonus when it comes to the legal recommendations. Again, I'm not an attorney or a CPA, so you got to talk to one of them, talk to your legal counsel. But if I was in your shoes, right, what have I done to protect my business? I typically start a LLC in order to operate my business. This way, I'm not operating under my name. But there's a lot of benefits. One, when you present yourself as a business, right, hey, I'm the owner of Five Star Homes LLC. Just an example sounds way more powerful than, hey, uh, my name is Jorge Contreras. So one, you sound more professional and you are more professional. Number two, you can now apply for business credit cards that you can use to fund your business. Imagine getting a 0% business credit card just like this one. This credit card here has a $50,000 limit and I have another one here that has a $10,000 limit. Can you imagine getting a $10,000 business credit card at 0% interest for 12 months? You can get approved for one through Chase as long as you have a 700 plus credit score and as long as your personal debt is under a 30% utilization. Now, again, you'll have to check with the bank to see if you qualify. But the beautiful thing about these business credit cards is that that business debt will not show up on your personal credit report. So if you are financing a vehicle, a home, it's not going to affect your debt to income ratio. Now you could utilize these 0% credit cards to pay for furniture, appliances, decor, supplies, photography, everything to get your Airbnb up and running. And then finally, by having an LLC, all of the income will flow into the LLC checking account. All of the expenses will flow out of that same business LLC. And this way, when it comes to tax time, your accountant or bookkeeper is going to be very happy because you separated your business from your personal. Finally, when it comes to the lease agreement, I recommend starting with a two or a three year lease agreement. This way you can lock in the same rent for two to three years and it'll only boost your returns and your profits. However, most of my leases, when I began doing the arbitrage model specifically in 2019, I started with buying in 2017. Then I got into arbitrage in 2019. All of my leases were 12 month leases and I was able to renew 100% of my lease agreements. The landlords wanted to renew. I wanted to renew. It was a win-win situation. So even if you do a 12 month lease, as long as you are doing a great job, as long as you are maintaining the property in good condition, paying the landlord on time and there's no issues or no major issues, the landlord's typically going to want to renew the lease. And that's in your best interest, right? You don't want your business to stop after one year. You just want to keep it going. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Make sure you also follow me on my Instagram where I post content every single day. See you guys on the next one.